Robin Dominic Cruz, a former WEC champion, a former UFC champion, but most importantly, this guy is a lifelong martial artist. He is here to solve the problem of combat, and very few people have uh, kind of a physical and mental connection like Dominic Cruz. We, we've seen that TJ Dillashaw is the athlete. It comes down to patterns. Is the key for Dominic Cruz to interrupt those patterns, to break TJ Dillashaw as he's trying to set up the kill shot? You know, there's, there's a lot of interesting things at play here. And a lot of the time when people are talking about this stuff and fighters say funny things, that can be really entertaining and sell some tickets, but for the most part, it's really irrelevant unless it's relevant. And in Dominic Cruz's case, he has studied, in the couple of years off, he studied fighting, he studied movement, he studied the martial arts, he studied the push and pull of combat, and he studied the art of war, and lately he's been looking at what works. Conor McGregor's words sell pay-per-views, and that's cool, but they also get inside the head of his guy. And, and Dominic Cruz wants TJ to be aggressive because that is the definition of what TJ does. He comes forward. They, they move similarly, but TJ's game is rooted in aggression. I just did a breakdown on this. It'll probably be coming out on UFC.com today. Uh, so you can check it out. But he uses aggression as part of his movement game. It's all designed to push you back, make you confused, maybe freeze you, and then unload on you. Dominic Cruz, on the other hand, his whole game is designed against aggressive fighters. His whole game is rooted in evasion. Chase me, chase me really aggressively, and if possible, chase me angrily. And then I'm gonna move, as you're over aggressive, I'm gonna step out to the side and hurt you. So the debate and the words, as fun and entertaining as it can be, and, and Dominic Cruz, who didn't have a lot to say for a long time, and didn't necessarily understand fighting the way he understands it right now, understands fighting, he's one of the best analysts in the game, and he's trying to use words to provoke this guy to come forward aggressively. Uh, TJ Dillashaw, of course, he is the champion at 135 pounds, but still relatively inexperienced. Uh, can Dominic Cruz utilize the fact that he's been in there so many times against top tier competition? Can he rattle TJ Dillashaw? Can he get under his skin and force him to make mistakes? F get him to fight uncharacteristically? Uh, of course, because Dwayne Ludwig has probably set out a good path for him to walk away as the 135 pound champion. But what, do, what does Dominic Cruz need to do to ensure that he leaves the, the cage as the, the 135 pound king? I think he needs to really, the, the challenge, the hard challenge for Dominic Cruz, is kind of the same that it's always been for his game. And that is you gotta win minute 18 and 21 and 23, and you gotta be still in there at the end. And I think one of the conflicts of this one is you see he's not in the shape that he once was. He's smarter, he's more talented, he's better, he understands the game better, but he's not in that elite, elite super athlete shape. Dillashaw is. Dillashaw is as, as really solid and, and structured an athlete as you can get. Is that so intentional for Dom? I think Dom's time off prevented him from maintaining his level of athleticism. I, I think that was one of the challenges that come. Does the knee work? Yes. Is your game still good? Yes. Is your mind still good? Yes. But is your body in as good a shape as it would have been if you didn't have the years off? And the answer to that is going to be certainly no. Can he work around it? Maybe he can. Why is that certainly no? I think because a lot of viewers out there would see, okay, he's got time on his hands. Control the things that you can control. Well, you can control the fact that you can still be an athlete. Do the necessary, take the necessary steps to ensure that you're in the best shape you've ever been in, considering you're facing one of the best athletes you've ever faced. But there are certain injuries that prevent you from doing the, the top level strength and conditioning. And a knee stabilizing injuries are one of those. If you can't push off, if you can't move, if you can't go from zero to zero to 60, if you can't push off while doing uh, uh, certain types of explosive exercises, if you can't do cardio, you just can't be in the shape. So that particular kind of injury will have prevented him from maintaining that level of athleticism. So that's a factor for sure. It is a really interesting fight. Uh, what, what's interesting when you look at the, the way they're moving is going to be after, how did we move? But when you study the choices that TJ made, my feeling is that, that Dwayne Ludwig will be looking in certain cases when you've done X, we have one of three yeah. options. Always when you've pivoted this way, here's our go-to. So it won't be just what does TJ do to get to you, is what does TJ do in connection to what Dominic does. When Dominic pivots, if he's going this way, we've identified he either moves that way or he moves that way or he disengages or he attacks. We have to have planned in advance for each one of these variables. And that, all of that crazy math, Dominic wins on art 
and TJ wins on math, and they have to have done a ton of freaking math to win this fight. And remember, all the action goes down this Sunday in Boston. Don't forget to tune in to FN at 8 p.m. for the prelims headlined by our boy Patrick Cote taking on the extremely talented Ben Saunders.